Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about inversion of control. So, inversion of control is actually a design principle that lets you create classes and objects that are loosely coupled to each other, so that it is easy to test and maintain. So, uh, IOC principle actually focuses on the flow of control in your program, uh, which means in actually in object-oriented programming, the objects has to be depend on each other to achieve certain functionality. So IOC mainly focuses on how do you create the dependencies for those objects and how do you supply those dependencies into the objects. So let's try to understand the principle of IOC uh, using some real world uh, example. So consider uh, Bob is a software developer who is working for a software company. So every day morning Bob has to take a car to reach the office. So every morning Bob finds a rental car and then and then he pays the rent and he give the directions to the driver and then the driver will take Bob to the office. So this is Bob's daily routine, okay? But at some point of time, Bob actually gets tired because every time in the morning, he finds it difficult to find an actual rental car. Sometimes the car arrives very late and also Bob is not able to manage the expense to pay the rent to the driver. And, and and also sometimes every time a new driver comes, so the Bob has to explain the directions every time to the driver. So now Bob raised this concern to the office. Now the company wants to solve the problem. So the company decided to send a car to Bob every morning to pick Bob to the office. So now Bob is very happy because Bob don't have to spend any time in finding the rental car. He don't have to manage expenses to pay the rent. Also, he don't have to supply any directions because the car is actually coming from the office, office so it knows the directions. So Bob is very happy, so every day, uh, every day morning the office sends the car to pick Bob to the office. This is actually a good example for inversion of control. Because in this case, the control for managing the daily commute has been inverted from Bob to the office. So now let's try to understand the same example from the programming perspective. Now you create a class called employee and the functionality of the class employee is to go to office, right? So you create a class called employee and the class employee has a function called go to office. Inside the function go to office, you actually have to create an object for the car. And then while creating the object for the car, you have to pass some necessary parameters to the car class. Like you have to pass the rent, you have to pass the directions to the car, and you may also have to pass the tick. And then once you initialize the car object, you just have to call the function drive to office from the car object. So this is the traditional way to program this particular real world use, 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 use case, right? But there are some downsides in this approach. In this approach, the class employee and the object car is tightly coupled to each other. So there are a lot of problems with, with this approach. Consider in case in future, if the location of the office has been changed, you have to change the implementation of the employee because you are the one who is passing the directions to the car, so you have to update that. And in case if the rent of the car has been increased in the future, you still have to update the employee class implementation. You need to change the way that you pass the rent to the car. Now, this is the problem, right? Because actually these are not the responsibilities of the employee class. Changing the location of the office or increasing the uh, rent of the car is not actually the employee's problem. So whenever that happens, you don't have to change the uh, implementation of the employee class. So this is where inversion of control comes into picture. With inversion of control, you don't, instead of creating the object of the car inside the employee class, you actually initialize it outside of the employee class and you just pass the object of the car into the employee. And the employee class just have to call the function drive to office instead of creating the object and passing the necessary parameters. And also if you notice, the type of the object car is just an interface. It is not the concrete class. By, with this approach, the, the class employee and the object car is now loosely coupled. The complex implementation of creating the object and passing the rent directions has been completely hidden from the employee. So even in case in the future, if the location changed or if the rent increase, you don't have to change any implementation in the employee class. That is the whole point of inversion of control. Also, inversion of control is just a principle and it is always up to the developer how to implement it. Uh, there are several implement implementations available for the inversion of control and dependency injection is one of the implementation where you actually pass the dependencies through the object through the constructor 
and there are several other implementations available as well like you can use the service locator or you can use the factory design pattern to initialize the dependencies for your objects so in this video we talked about the principle of inversion of control i hope this video is useful thank you so much for watching Audio jungle.